And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, Tom Vassell here, and today we're taking a look at a game called Foreclose, which looks like it has the Monopoly guy in the front, and he's running out of money because everybody wants his stuff. Basically, his name is Uncle Moneybags, and it's time we're selling off his, uh, his fortune, and everybody's trying to get collections of things. Okay, that's uh, uh, an, uh, basically a theme to say I'm trying to get cards of the same color. Woohoo! How do I do that? By making other players offers? Let me show you. There are two decks of cards in this game, property cards and special cards, and the whole point of this game is to collect property cards of the same color. So if I have, for example, these three cards, that's a set of three orange cards here, which is going to be worth points at the end of the game. Some cards are also worth bonus points, like this one here is worth an extra two points no matter what. And on the back of the book there's a chart, so if I had three orange cards, it's worth four points. If I had eleven orange cards, which is every orange card in the game, that'd be worth thirty-six points. Now players are going to start with two of these cards. One of them is face down, the other is face up. You pick which one is which. That's going to be the only face-down card you have the whole game, so it's just to have some uncertainty in the game. Then, at the beginning of, of each round, players are going to draw a card and place that card in front of them like this. This card is here, and then maybe uh, Bob has a card like that in front of him, and Joe has a card in front of him like this, and Sam has a card in front of him like this. Now, on my turn, I have some options. I can pass, essentially, and take a coin or take a special card. And special cards can give bonuses, like this one here will double uh, one of the point cards in the game, so it can turn a plus one to plus two, or a plus two to plus four. Some of them give different actions that you can take against other players. This one here gives you points if you don't have green and orange cards at the end of the game. Uh, let's look at, so many of them give points out, but not all of them give points out. Some of them can do different things, like this one lets you steal a coin from each other player. Anyhow, so you can do that, or you can make an offer to somebody else. Let's say I have a green card, so I want this green card here, too. So I say, okay, I'm offering you this, this card here plus a coin for your card. That's what you have to do for a coin that you have from your own pile, not from the bank. Now, he can say yes, in which case he gives you this card, he takes this card, and he got a coin. But let's say he doesn't want to give up that green card. In this case, then... He can put money on this card to protect the card. Now, you can put as much money as you want. So let's say he puts three on it. I now have an option. I can say, uh, forget that. Or I can pay him one more coin than the coins are on his card. If I say forget that, I can make that same, the same offer to another player, but it, can, it has to be players in a clockwise order. So since I made him the first offer, I can't make this guy an offer. But I can make him an offer. If no one takes my offer, well, too bad. Once you have protection money on you, anybody can trade with you. So this guy could say, I want that card. He probably wouldn't. But let's say this guy did. He takes that card. He just simply pays four coins to you, and they switch. After everybody's gone, whether they've made offers, accepted offers, etc., you will take the card in front of you and put it in front of you, and you it's going to be worth scoring points at the end of the game. With the exception of this card, this is a money card. There's several money cards. Whenever you take a money card, you get a coin. And then if I take another money card later on, I would get two coins. If I got three money cards, when I take it, I'd get three coins and so on. The game ends when the pile of property cards runs out, and at that point, players will tally up their points like I showed you earlier. Most points is the winner. Now, I have to say that the idea of foreclose really sounded interesting to me. The idea to offer someone a deal, if they don't take it, you offer the next person a deal, that's pretty cool. You offer someone a deal, they can either take the deal or they can put more money on the card to protect it. The problem that this has is that the game itself, while that's an interesting concept, doesn't lend it to that. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get sets of cards, right? So even if you play with a big group, there's many different colors. So maybe I'm going for green and John's going for green, but no one else is going for green. He's going for orange, he's going for purple, he's going for yellow. So you might offer someone a card, or you might look at your card and go, I'm pretty content with that. And you just take it. So the offers aren't done quite as often. And when they are, the protection money you put on the card, you know, you say, I really want that card, but I hardly have any money because money can get pretty tight in this game. So it's kind of a, it sounds like a cool idea, but in practice, every time it just was boring. 
I'm passing, I'm passing, I'm passing. I'll make an offer for your card. Okay, I'll take it or don't take it. And that sounds like, oh, da, 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 da. Uh, here comes the offer. But in reality, it just wasn't that interesting. Then the special cards are completely unbalanced. Yay, this one gives me two coins. As opposed to this one, which gives me a possibility of five points. Or you get one that, you know, like the one I showed you, I think that you don't have any green or orange cards. But if I already have uh, collecting green or orange cards, then whoopee to do. I've basically wasted a turn to draw a card that was worthless for me. And that's no big deal per se, but if someone draws better, they will score better. Really, they will. And the money cards, you take a money card, you get a coin. Yay, but will you get another money card later on to get two coins? It's just not that interesting. And, and you know, you say it could build up, but if it builds up, you've not taken property cards, so therefore you will lose the game. The game has a set number of rounds, depending on the number of players in the game, a uh, number of cards that are out there. So because the game has a set number of rounds, you can't afford to take all those money cards. The game just feels like it was, it was this cool concept that somebody had, and they played it, and like, oh, let's do this. But then when they actually did it, eh, not to mention I'm not a big fan of the artwork either. The artwork's okay. Um, I, I don't know. It just, it just it, it, when, I, when I read the rules, I was like, oh, this is very interesting. I think this game will be good. I was excited about it. But in practice, it just really fizzled out. And the excitement that I think the game mechanisms uh, do uh, were just diluted. And instead of it being like an auction, like, woohoo, ha ha, I'm going to get all this stuff, it was more like a... I'll take that, please. And that just doesn't make for a fun game. Dice Tower Judgment, not very interesting. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Shut the door. Yeah.